Hello everybody, my name is Heroic Nerd and today we are getting into the horror comics. This is Tales of Evil. These are um, Atlas Comics original horror stories. This is like their horror title. And this is it, we're getting close. By the time this comes up, Halloween should be right around the corner. So I'm assuming that this is the scariest that Atlas has to offer, at the very least the creepiest. At the very least, let's get some suspense out of these goddamn things. Not to say that the others leading up to this were not horrifying. There was some terrible stuff in those, but... Yeah, I'm looking forward to this one. Check this out. John, what happened? Oh my god! Looks like John's a fucking werewolf. And a fairly well-drawn werewolf. A fairly well-drawn werewolf who's had a nice meal. So... I'm looking forward to this. I'm very happy to have finally been, been here. I made a lot of content for this October, so I've been looking forward to this one. Let me see. Location, England. The place, Stonehenge, shrouded by mystery and superstition for centuries, now spotlighted again by the Black Arts. Black Arts, I guess they're magicians. I'll show you the fools. I will unleash an evil such as the world has never known. Master of the dark who must walk on the wind. Adoremus te, Adoremus te, destroy the faithless one. Adoremus te. Spawn of the devil. That's our first story. Yeah, these are um, tales of evil. They are anthology books. There are three of them. I'm going to cover all three, and they are anthology books. So we're going to get multiple stories per. And this one is called Spawn of the Devil. My assumption is that that creature is the devil. Adoramus Te, pass your spirit into this lifeless effigy. Possess this innocent doll-like figure, O Prince of Darkness. He's putting his soul into a doll? Why? But why? Why would you do that? That must be him. I told you, he always comes here. Okay, Bruno, come along. Fools, idiots, you're too late. This time I've done it. I've completed my task. Hold him down, secure him tight. It's too late, ha! Come on, Bruno. You've had your fun. Now it's back to the sanatorium with you. Too late. My work is finished. And there it is. Oh, and then the little fucking girl is going to get the fucking doll, isn't she? Oh, my God. That doll is not cute. That is not a cute doll, young lady. That is a terribly grotesque doll that you found at the Stonehenge, and it literally looks like the devil. But she's an idiot, so... Anna trembled when she picked up the doll, for what she now possessed was already possessing her, oh god. Yes, I understand. I must hide you. And that night, Anna was awakened by another silent command. Yes, master, I will come. Oh man, I don't like where this shit is going. Oh, fuck, that's terrible. Yes, master, I understand. I will obey. Anna waited for her father to leave for London the following morning. See you this evening, dear. I have it, master. Is that Anna? Is she grabbing the knife? Anna, how many times have I told you not to play with knives? You'll cut yourself. Now put it away. Yes, mommy. Now why don't you go with Kitty and go play outside? I'll call you at lunchtime. As the days pass, Anna redecorated the empty servants' quarters to make her guests feel at home. Even a pentagram symbol of black magic was painted on the floor. Holy shit. Once again, Atlas Comics is not, they're not fucking holding back. I'm getting worried about her, Jean. She hasn't eaten enough to keep a bird alive for the past week. Maybe she has the flu. I'll ring Dr. Hutchison in the morning. That evening, after everyone has fallen asleep, everyone but Anna. Oh, fuck. What are you going to do, Anna? What are you going to do? What is the master telling you to do? Here, kitty kitty. Oh, no, not the kitty. Oh, fuck. I have done as you asked, master. That's blood. That's blood dripping out of the cat. Oh, my God. This is fucked up. She doesn't have the flu, but I'd like to examine her in my office. There is something wrong with the pupils of her eyes. Nothing serious, I'm sure. I noticed it too. It looks as though she's been hypnotized. What in the world could cause that? The demon devil doll that's clearly been sewn from fucking severed disgusting... Ugh. God, people are idiots. Anna, I can't find the cat anywhere. Have you seen him? Oh dear. Oh dear, 
No, I haven't. Why, good morning, Tom. Come in. Thank you, Miss Hardcourt. Did I hear you say that your cat's missing? Yes, our cat just vanished. Have you seen him? No. Funny, though. I'm missing three cats and a dog. I came over here to ask if you'd seen them. Yes. Tonight, master. Tonight! God. Look at that. She's long gone. Anna's gone. I wonder if she's gonna die. I wonder if this is gonna end with Anna dying. Care for a piece of cake, Tom? Why, thank you. Oh my god. What is that? Blood on the knife? Is that blood on the knife? I'm sorry, Tom. I'm, I just remembered something. It's important. Right. See you. No time to explain. Just get home as fast as I can. Holy shit, what the fuck? What are you gonna find? Anna, my god, Anna, what are you doing? Fool, you should have waited. I would have spared you till tonight, till Candlemas Eve, the night when evil walks the earth. But now that you have seen, now that you know I have taken your daughter's body as well as her mind, I can spare you no longer. You have witnessed the forbidden, and now you must die. Jean, where are you? Oh, fuck, this is escalating. Oh my god, oh shit, they're dead. Good, now you're here, I can get rid of your meddling too, you see? I needed a body to possess, and your daughter was the perfect host. So he's not in the doll anymore, after all. I couldn't be expected to remain in the form of a doll forever, could I? Oh shit, ooh, look at that. He's gonna take his fucking body. Goodbye, mortal. Tonight is Candlemas Eve, and I have work to do. Fuck. So that's the devil? He's just gonna be unleashed? When the police arrived that day, they found Peter Harcourt out of his mind, babbling some madness about the devil. Clutched in his fist was a broken doll, the effigy of the Prince of Darkness. They never discovered who started that fatal fire that claimed the lives of his family. But he did so soon learn hideous and staggering truth. They think I'm crazy. They don't believe I actually can talk to the devil, but I can. I am his servant. I gave him my life. But you already know that, don't you? And he's got- and he's building another doll. Oh my fucking god. No! Spawn of the devil. I mean, shit, man. If you're like the type of person to be scared of your kids, man. That- that'll do it for you. Jesus Christ. She, she was all killing the cats in the neighborhood and stuff? Dude, that's brutal. That's... I like it, though. I like it because fucking... Atlas Comics, man. They don't hold back. It's good. Good stuff. It's totally feel, it, it totally feels indistinguishable from any Tales from the Crypt story or whatever, but... Very well written. Very dark. Doesn't hold back. It's good stuff. Alright. Now we have A Matter of Breeding. More than one story. This is it. I'm bringing it to you guys. This is some good shit. It had started so innocently. How could Irene have known that the experiment would go wrong? Now she was screaming, screaming for her life. Chester, once human, was now a hideous creature that lusted for revenge. Its foul breath blasted in her face. Its watery, hate-filled eyes glared into hers. Irene had wanted a million dollars, but now she was ready to cash in her last chip. It all had to do with the hair experiments and a matter of breeding. Hair experiments? What is he? Oh, he is. He's a fucking werewolf. Shit, look at that. This is the wolf story. No, please don't kill me, Chester. Please. He's, he's going to kill the shit out of you. The hairpiece business had been booming. Fortunes were being made, but Irene Waring and her partner, Andre Morrell, were unlucky. What, hairpieces? Toupees. This is a story about a werewolf who wears a toupee. God, please let it be a haunted toupee that turns him into a monster. Bah, we have the best style in town, and we're still losing money. I wish I had the dough to continue with my experiments, then we'd be on top. Relax, honey. We'll find a way to finish the test. I know we will. Almost on cue, Chester Potter came into the shop. Potter, who had a million dollars for every hair that had fallen victim to his comb. Can I help you, sir? I'd like to have a hairpiece made. Well, sir, you came to the right place. Please follow me. Mr. Morale will take your stylist. We'll take care of you. 
This is just a lace front piece. The kind that most actors wear that just place a little spirit gum under the lace and you'll have a full natural looking head of hair. No, I want something that can't be removed, that won't come off. I'll pay any price. Money is no object. But to Andre, money was the only object. There is another way of restoring hair, a secret method that I have developed on my own. Can you show it to me? No. The experiments are expensive. I ran out of funds just before the final test. If only I could finish, I'd become rich. You mean, if I were to back your plan, I'd have hair as well as a piece of your company? Yes. I know Andre's methods will work. He was so close to success. Very well. I recently inherited a fortune. I've no head for business, but this idea sounds too good to let slide. I'll return in the morning to draw up the papers. So he's going to give him the money. He's going to give him the money so that he can do the hair experiments. And this is somehow going to turn him into a werewolf? All right. Talk about luck. I'd better go down to the lab at once. Right, I'll mind the shop. This is fucking weird. It's back to work again, Fang. We found an angel. An angel investor. Sorry, old fellow, but we don't want our new partner to learn our secret, not until we've completed the final experiment. Andre picked up the tablets made from the hormones of the wolf. Tomorrow, the last phase of his labors would begin, with the aid of Chester Potter. Our new partner is also our new guinea pig. In a few days, he should be growing hair, and I'll be getting rich. Chester Potter arrived at the shop. Mr. Potter is here. He has the papers drawn up. Good morning. I have a surprise for our new partner. Here are the fruits of our eight years of work. Now, with your help, I can produce more and sell them in a chain of shops all over the country. Okay, so the, so he's making hair growth pills. See for yourself. Take two before going to bed tonight. We shall sign the partnership paper. Oh my god. The pills are going to make him a werewolf. The pills are going to make him a fucking werewolf. He's going to turn into a wolfman. Chester Potter made the deal. Andre and Irene now had a half a million dollars in the company account, and Chester, he had the pills. I can hardly wait to see what I look like in the morning. Imagine that. Pills that grow hair. But back at the shop, another kind of celebration was taking place. Half a million, I still don't believe it. Listen, honey, the way old Chester looks at you, string him along, and with any luck, we'll be able to retire in a few months. Sure, but I feel sorry. The guy those pills, what were they? Wolf hormones. <laughs> He's just, you're just gonna tell her? They're wolf hormones, honey. I once heard an ancient theory that they could grow hair on humans. I tried to prove it, but I never finished my experiments. So don't worry, the hormones are harmless. They won't hurt our boy. And even as they spoke, their subject was already starting to transform. My head, it's throbbing in pain. Maybe if I take an aspirin, I'll stop the ache. All the excitement today must have... Hey, oh, okay, well, it's working. It's growing his hair. He's getting his hair. The following morning. It's a miracle. The tablets are working. I knew they would. Tell me, did you have any side effects? A slight headache. But who cares? I feel like a new man. Several days passed as Chester's hair grew. So did his ambition. We'll make a fortune with this new process. How soon can Andre put it on the market? He's working on an even more effective tablet. It should be ready in a month. My, you certainly look handsome with your new hair. Okay, it's fully grown now. He has a full head of hair. Later that night, Andre and Irene continue their plan. The sap is falling for you. String him along until the experiment is finished. Okay, so now it's a love plot. I wish it were over. I'm tired of acting like a lovesick schoolgirl. He's been taking the pills four days now. We should see results soon. Little did Andre know just how soon. The pain. I can't stand it. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. That escalated quickly. Chester had no idea what had happened to him. His mind no longer was his own, but that of an animal. An animal imprisoned in a human form for almost 40 years. A mindless beast now unleashed and deadly. And now that the animal and Chester had taken over, and he kill and he's killing a girl. Damn, that's fine. I shit. He killed her, but did he did he rape her? Cause it's the the, the story is called a matter of breeding. What's wrong? Oh, it's because they're breeding. Okay, never mind. 
What's wrong, Chester dear? You look exhausted. I didn't sleep well. I had a terrible nightmare. I must have been a winner. Here, have some coffee. After Chester left, Andrea and Irene continue the work. The wolf is dead. What killed the wolf? I extracted too many hormones. His glands couldn't take it. But I have enough pills now to mark it. To get some crates. You can help me pack our first million dollar shipment. But while Andre and Irene count their money, Chester was racking up victims. What's happening to me? I can't control myself. Shit. Okay, what's gonna happen? And then Chester saw it reflected in the window. The hideous, unbelievable truth. My God, what happened to me? What have I done? Those tablets, they've turned me into a beast. A monster. Yeah, but you got the hair, dude. You got hair and then some. I love that. I love that in stories when people get exactly what they want. It's very... Mwah. And as nightmarish reality sinks into a no longer human brain. Well, there goes the shipment. Remember, not a word to Chester. Relax, he couldn't care. He's rich enough that all he really wants is hair. So that's how they did it. Oh shit, he knows. He's mad. Get him! Get him, Chester! I trusted you, and you deceived me. You transformed me into a murdering beast. But I'll have my revenge now. Yes, Chester, do it! Andre never knew what happened. He died before he hit the floor of a heart attack. You're next, Irene, and then me. This horror must end. Your product must never get on that market. Holy shit. The following morning, the police discovered three bodies and a dead wolf. I doubt we'll ever solve this one. Maybe that's the wolf that killed the three. But we can't be sure. What's this slip of paper? It's a shipper's receipt. It was from the woman's hand. It's for 10,000 bottles of Miracle Hair Replacement Tablets. Boy, what will they think of next? And so Chester had won the battle, but the war was yet to begin. Holy shit. Holy shit. 10,000 bottles of werewolf serum are just out there now. God, I would love to see. That's such a novel idea. It's stupid. Because there's no way in hell that taking hormones from a creature and implant... You can't really... You can't even do that. As far as I know, and I'm a college-educated individual, there is no way in medical science that you can take one person's hormones and give them to another. You can increase and decrease. You can manipulate hormones. But you can't, like... You can't take a wolf's hormones and... Well, I... I don't know. What the fuck do I know? All I know is that was fucking crazy. It's clever, though, the idea that a man wanting to replace his lost hair ends up becoming a wolf. It's cool. That's cool. That was a good one. I hope... No, we probably won't get to see the continuation. But the war is yet to begin. Oh, well. Here's the next one. Final story. Woo! Sometimes I lose my breath when I talk about these things too much. 11.30 p.m. You feel the autumn breeze waft and curl around and through the cold marble tombstones, making an eerie sound in the quiet October night. But you're not afraid. You're secure. For you know there are no such things as vampires. You clutch the heavy bag at your side. The bag that contains the crucifix, the pointed oak shaft, and the blunt mallet. Just in case, for tonight you are seeking out the legendary vampire of Cobb's Hill Cemetery, you are on your first stake out. We had the devil, we had werewolves, and now we have vampires. This is a pretty good issue. This is going to be a gas. Vampires. Ha! This place is so run down, no vampire would live here. You don't know that, buddy. You don't fucking know that. You walk through rows of crumbling headstones. You wish you had worn a heavier jacket as the chilly night air penetrates your clothing. You shiver a little. Then you think of Mary. You no longer see, feel so chilly. What a crazy scheme. I don't know how Mary conned me into it. But you remember how the whole thing began. It was when Stan brought the newspaper article to the lion's den. Well, Phil, you're the big expert on the supernatural. What do you make this vampire scam? I don't know what you're talking about as usual. But what does the paper say? You recall how you wanted to sink your fist into Stan's face. Stan had just one of those faces. Well, Mr. Vampire Authority, do you believe it? I believe that people have seen something at Cobb's Hill Cemetery. That legend goes back almost 200 years. You never liked the way Stan looked at Mary, and the way she responded to him. 
But Stan was rich, loaded. All women seemed to find that attractive, even Mary. Well, I don't buy it. In fact, I'll wager a thousand bucks that there is no vampire. How do you plan to find out? Write a letter to Dracula? <laughs> Everyone knew how broke you were. Going to college on what money you could earn or borrow? Stan knew it. He was always rubbing your face in it. No, the postage rates are too high. I've got a better idea. I bet you do. You bet right. I'll pay Phil here 1,000 big ones if he can spend a night in the cemetery with or without finding the vampire. Oh, fuck. That's a good wager. I like where this is going. A thousand bucks. That was more money than you'd ever seen in one lump. You held back your hatred as you stared at the post-dated check. What the devil is he trying to prove? I may be broke, but I'm not as poor as he is. Forget your pride a second. A thousand dollars is a lot of bread, and after all you've studied the occult, you don't really believe in vampires. No, but I also don't believe in proving anything to a rich boy either. This whole business sounds like a plot from a bad 30s movie. Eh, hey, it is. But in your heart, you knew Mary was right. You drove her home. She felt good in your arms. Her body warm next to you. The scent of her hair mingled with the autumn breeze. For Mary, you would do anything. The striking of the old clock rings you back to the present. With a jolt, your fingers tighten around the handle of the bag. Bong. Bong. You're more rattled than you think. You slip on the slick wet grass and fall over in a slab of granite. Your bag slides from your grasp. You snap on your few light and see the stairs looking back up at you from the dark yawning. Your heart thuds in your chest, but you continue. You must. Catacombs? I never knew this place had them. I must get the bag. You feel the sl Oh shit, there's somebody behind him. Look, or is that a tombstone? You feel the slick slime from steps sinking into your shoes. You hold close to the damp walls, the pen light guiding every soggy step. You find the bag. Then for a long moment, you wish you had never looked. You stand transfixed, rooted in the soggy earth. You see a rat scurry past the massive cobweb sticking in your mouth and eyes skull stare up at you through empty sockets. You have but one desire. To escape! Yeah, buddy. You should probably get the fuck out of there. You run. That's all you can do. You have forgotten the thousand dollars. You have forgotten Mary. You remember fear. You stumble and crash inside the dark things that you do not want to see. You run as though the devil himself is after you. You stop. Your chest aches. Your heart thumps. In your ears, you breathe deeply, not smelling the fetid air that clings to you like a mist. Now you know what made you stop. It's a light. A light as bright as day. It's coming from the far end of the tunnel. It must be the vampire. But suddenly, the light goes out. For a second, your heart stops cold. You are looking in the face of a vampire. Fear has made you strong. You knock the vampire to the ground and through some miracle, plunge the stake through his heart into the ground below. You aren't aware of the people around you or the movie lights that flood the catacombs. No! Everything seems far away like a dream. You don't even take note of the man's body lying at your feet. The man you murdered. My God, call the police! You don't even feel the vibe-like grip around you. You hear the voices of your friends. You see a group of people staring at you, but you don't know why. Phil, what happened? We're on location making a horror movie when this crazy kid bursts in and kills the star. Oh God, no! You don't feel them load you into a police car, as all your attention is on one thing. The thin man looking down at you, with a mocking smile, exposing two vampire-sharp fangs. Vampire! Yeah, sure, sure, pal. Wait, so he really is a vampire? Holy shit! That was great! It was a twist! And then that twist turned into a twist! <laughs> that was great! God... I love it. That's three fucking stories. You got a devil story, a fucking werewolf story, and a vampire story. That was great. I don't know about you fuckers, but I'm entertained. God, this shit got me straight up in the Halloween mood. That's why I'm recording it. That's why I'm like, I'll, I'll upload it like, I don't know, a, a few days before Halloween. I'll do this final, this final series. But man, that was good. 
I look forward to the next few issues. Let's see what they have. But for now, that's the end of this one. If you liked reading this one and you want to read more with me, go ahead and like the video, subscribe to the channel. Until next time, nerds, stay heroic.